Uh, let's go now to uh, Jerusalem and Kelly Wallace. Uh, Kelly, um, Ilan Ramon, in many ways, the pride of Israel. Miles, exactly, the pride of Israel. And so, as you might imagine, tremendous sadness, shock, and emotion throughout the country right now. A colleague of mine was talking to a top representative at Israel's spy, uh, st excuse me, space agency, and his quote is, we are in shock. We know that Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, we are told, was watching events unfold on television like most of us were. His spokesman saying the Prime Minister watching those events. No formal official reaction, though, coming from the Israeli government until there is a formal announcement from NASA and from the American government. But we can tell you that when Colonel Ilan Ramon took off on the space shuttle. There was tremendous excitement in Israel. It was front page news on the Israeli newspapers, on the Israeli television stations. Really a lot of joy, as you know, Miles, a lot of sadness in this country. There has been tremendous violence over the past few months. Lots of concern about that. There were the elections just a few days ago. Not a lot of excitement about that, but this was looked at as tremendous joy and pride. Colonel Ramon, we know, is married, has four children. His father, in fact, we understand, was watching some of the events on television at an Israeli television station a short time ago. We believe he has since left and headed to his home. Colonel Ramon has tremendous experience, more than 3,000 flight hours. Also, he took part in a mission back in 1981, a mission destroying the nuclear reactor in Iraq. He also took part in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. So tremendous pride in Colonel Ramon. And right now, people are just still, Miles, holding out hope that this will turn out. But right now, tremendous sadness throughout Israel. Uh, it's hard to uh, imagine uh, the depth of sadness as we just sort of absorb all of this, Kelly. And, and it, um, it, it's difficult to even assess it. Uh, here, but there, I think, um, in a very profound way, a lot of hopes and dreams were flying with Ilan Ramon. Exactly. The representative from the space agency, again, talking to my colleague a short time ago, saying really everything is lost, all the work, all the experimentation, a lot of dreams, as you said. And again, the symbol, really, this being the first Israeli astronaut in space and also coming in the context of a very difficult time. This has been more than two years of violence in this country, the start of the second Palestinian intifada against Israel. The economy is dismal right now. Lots of concern about the violence, the state of the situation, the future. And again, Miles, just looking at the media attention, looking at television and newspaper coverage of this, it was really looked at by many as one piece of really good news in a, in a sea of a lot of bad news over the mm. past few months, Miles. It's, it's, it's stunningly uh, tragic. Uh, uh, please, Kelly, stay close. Let us know what you hear from the government, what you, what you hear on the streets. Um, of course, we're all harking back to, to the last time this happened. 17 years ago this past week, we marked the anniversary of the space shuttle Challenger uh, and its explosion. A uh, little more than a minute after liftoff from the Kennedy Space Center, seven member crew died there. We marked that anniversary this past week. Tom Mentier, CNN correspondent, was live on the air uh, at that moment, has covered numerous shuttle missions over the years. Tom, what are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts uh, go to the families of the seven astronauts uh, aboard Columbia, the family, the friends, the loved ones, uh, immediately first. Uh, as you're well aware, the most two dangerous times are ascent and descent. And uh, I asked them if we had the animation of uh, not only uh, the ascent but the descent uh, when, when, when at maximum pressure and maximum velocity the shuttle uh, turns red hot underneath as it, as it re-enters the atmosphere. And uh, what you're seeing now in these pictures, uh, the heat is just absolutely tremendous. Uh, and one, as you pointed out, the, the multiple targets, uh, by seeing uh, different pieces, uh, it, it is something we, of course, have, have seen before, but uh, not in the same dynamics that we saw this morning. But uh, very, very difficult to watch, uh, not once, but a second time for me. Yeah. Uh, take us back to that day and, and what that was like and, and what happened in the immediate aftermath. Well, in the investigation, uh, I was there for uh, the, the search for the debris, uh, which I'm sure there were, would have been larger pieces because they weren't as high up in the atmosphere as they were on this one. Uh, but uh, the investigation is going to
to center around this debris field that you talk about being across a very wide area of West Texas, uh, I'm sure that uh, the pieces that they find uh, will not be very large. Uh, the initial descriptions that we've been hearing from West Texas are, are very small pieces of debris. Uh, but it's, uh, it's going to be a very slow, long investigation uh, that uh, takes a look at the airframe. As you mentioned, the, these airframes are certified for 100 missions. And of course, Columbia, nowhere near that. Uh, yeah. uh, but again, certification and what occurs in flight or after flight, as we found out with Challenger, are not necessarily what's written in the books. Well, it's worth pointing out to our viewers, and I know, Tom, you are well aware of this. Uh, 20 plus years after Columbia first flew the first shuttle to fly, this is still an experimental vehicle, an experimental program. This is not an airliner, is it? No, it's not. And. Uh, Every, every time uh, these astronauts uh, strap themselves in for a mission, they realize the dangers that, that they are about to face. They train for it uh, for months, if not years, uh, before they fly, while they're flying, and while they're returning. They know what the dangers are that, that they're facing in this program. They do. They do understand it. Um, if uh, Tom, if you could stay close, we may want to check in with you in just a moment. Um, I. Uh, I think probably this might be a good time to hear from some of the crew members. We, of course, interviewed them before they left and um, got a sense of their excitement for their mission, uh, their, uh, their zest for their job. Uh, a lot of them would tell you it really wasn't a job. Uh, let's listen to Michael Anderson. Well, uh, unfortunately, this mission is so packed with, with scientific experiments and everything. As, as a matter of fact, when we return, we'll be the heaviest space shuttle ever to land. So there's not a lot of room to take anything uh, personal or special with you on this flight. So basically, I'm just going to take my notebook with my notes and uh, a couple extra pens and pencils. All right, Michael Anderson. Um, we spoke to all the crew before they left. And uh, as they always do, we, we asked them about the risks. Uh, we asked them about their philosophy on the risks. And to a person, they say, um, it's all worth it. Uh, let's listen to Rick Husband, the commander. The shuttle is a great vehicle. It, it is so impressive every time I sit down and study the different systems to see how well thought out this vehicle is and how well it works every time we go and fly. The fleet actually has probably only reached about a quarter of its design life. So on our particular flight, this will be the 28th flight of Columbia, and each of the airframes was designed for 100 flights. So there's still a lot of life left in the shuttle fleet. And it is, I would say, a tribute to the people who work on the, the shuttle in the inspections that they do and being able to find some very minor flaws like what we're talking about here because they do a fantastic job in, in doing the inspections and finding these things. And it's just like if you were, it's just, kind of like normal upkeep and maintenance like you would have on your car except that this is a much larger system and and so it, it is a very impressive and certainly by myself very much appreciated that the people are so diligent and do such a great job in keeping track of all those things kind of hard to hear all those words right at this moment um, but those words are, are all still well true uh, what was not added is that this is stuff that is still on the edge of the envelope, that term that test pilots use, pushing the envelope, the edge of our capabilities as human beings is manifested in what you see right here in this, in this space shuttle, uh, even 20 plus years after it first flew. Uh, but I should point out something that was mentioned a while ago, and I didn't get a chance to mention it, that, that the concept that a space shuttle is old is a bit of a fallacy. Um, they are certified, as we said, for 100 flights. Columbia is on, on our 28th mission. Uh, every fourth or fifth mission, they go through a, a, an overhaul, which is really almost right down to the, the spars and aluminum, uh, where they truly make uh, the, the shuttle new. In, in the case of Columbia, it had, for example, a brand new glass cockpit installed as part of its last overhaul. So it is, uh, to call it old is, is a bit of a myth. These are the, the most pampered aircraft or spacecraft, whatever you want to call it, in the world. And they're treated as such. Um, and 
uh, to, when they say 100 missions on that airframe, that's conservative even on its own. Uh, so at 28 missions, Columbia was, in fact, sure, the, uh, the old gray lady having first flown in April. We're looking at, also, uh, you obviously can see here, this is Challenger, it's the only model I have handy, but uh, the, the old gray lady in the sense chronologically, but at 28 missions, Discovery still has a, a few others, has actually flown more missions. So it's not uh, accurate to draw an assumption here about that necessarily.